It's a common view that glaciers are a rare phenomenon because we don't see many of them. But 10% of the Earth's surface is covered by glacial ice. They are the thermometers of the Earth, advancing and retreating with the global climate. Like the limestone substrata, the ancient ice in glaciers is subject to the erosion of wind, water, and time, with startling results. further north to glacier country. Here they will explore unique windows into the geological past. Even to walk on a glacier, you need to know what you're doing. You must contend with dangers like bad ice, crevasses, and avalanches. Liz and Andrew have joined Dick Flaherty, one of the few experienced ice cavers in the country. On the way down. You just the stuff the dive is doing this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna you're gonna lower me down and then. And then when you're down at the bottom, just say climbing, and I'll say fly on, and you're ready to go. Oh, okay. And if you fall, well, I've got you. Too bad. <laughs> You gotta just, when you're coming up, you don't want to smack the rope with the axe because you're on the wrong end of that <laughs> element. That won't affect me much, but you'll have a... I'll have a fun ride. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like those tools. They're good. Yeah. Climb on, dude. Climbing. You're on belay. On belay, on belay. Climb on, do that. Do that thing you do so well. You look like a praying mantis trying to come up a pane of glass. <laughs> <laughs> In this country, you soon realize it's better to be embarrassed than to be dead. Good 
technique there, Andrew. Keep the feet Glaciers flat move. They are literally rivers of ice. Science discovered this phenomenon this by accident. In 1827, a Swiss scientist built a hut on a glacier. When he returned, three years later, it had moved more than 300 feet down the hill. Like the, uh, well, this is a solid block of blue ice. That's right. You can see where all the fractions are occurring in here. And you yeah. can see where the ice or where air bubbles start. When sunshine hits some of these bubbles and they warm up a little bit, they'll migrate upwards through the, through the ice and keep tracking. Even yeah. people who study glaciers seldom venture into ice caves. They're too dangerous. The ice constantly melts, and passageways can collapse or change in seconds. If it rains, they can flood to the roof in minutes. Barely deep in the bowels of a glacier. This just continues on down, it cuts through everything. and Water molds glacial ice, just as it shapes limestone. The difference is that ice caves are constantly changing and moving. This is nature at its most dynamic. And so you get this color, and the deeper you get into the cave, the bluer it seems to get. It's nice and clean because there's no dirt. This is coming from meltwater and rainwater on the surface of the lake. So that's why it's so perfectly clean, and there's no debris in here. Dick Flaherty believes that ice caving is something a lot of people try only once. It may be why he does most of his exploring solo. One thing you have to watch out for in these things, though, is um, because this is fed from the surface of the glacier, uh, bright sunny days or heavy rainstorms can flash flood, and so the water can come up, you know, a foot an hour really fast. Dick hopes one day to find an ice man like the 5,000-year-old specimen found in 1991 in the Austrian Alps, or a prehistoric creature locked in ice in time. For the moment, though, he'll keep looking. The thrill of exploration, to go somewhere where no one has been before, to be the first person to lay eyes upon whatever it is that you're go about to see. It's hard to convey what that experience is like, but once you've done it the for the first time, it's like a drug. You have to have more and more of those experiences because it's a real thrill to have that. Yeah. One pull to uh, pay out, yep. two, pulls, two pulls to take in. And uh, three pulls is to uh, bring us up. Bring us up. Okay. The team wanted to explore a water-filled crevasse on top of the glacier. The divers tethered themselves to the surface. If the glacier moved, the water could drain out in a flash, leaving two heavily laden divers hanging in midair. Thank you. 
Ice caves are not dark and silty like rock caves, but they have their own dangers and discomforts. Near freezing water and diving equipment are not a great combination. In this water, the diver's breathing regulator systems freeze up, valves suddenly stick open, and the diver's air flows out uncontrollably. Even the valve on Andrew's buoyancy compensator froze open. This inflated his vest like a helium balloon, sending him rapidly to the surface. To avoid problems like the bends, divers should ascend slowly. Andrew had little choice but to shoot to the surface like a rocket. aren't there anymore. <laughs> They've just burnt, dissolved off my face. <laughs> and my toes are frozen. But it's just so beautiful. It looks to go pretty deep. That's great. I mean, I, I mean, I only got to 10 meters before I had my problem, but I could see probably another 10, maybe 15 meters down below wow. that. So it's a good 25 meters deep. We'll just thaw ourselves out a bit. And yeah, yeah. Take two. See if Chilly we can do water. it. Glacial ice is not like normal ice. It's much more dense. The layers of ice are squeezed together by the huge weight of ice and snow above. This great pressure eliminates all but the smallest bubbles of air. The heavy ice becomes bright blue in color. This is a cave called Icy Fate. It's a world of both rock and ice, the two elements the quest team has explored. Places like this put our relationship with the Earth into perspective. The time we have spent on this planet is minor compared to the Earth's geological time. Our effect, however, has been major.
Some people question the need to look to the past. Others study it reverently to find clues which may illuminate our path to the future.